So let's talk about cruise ship auditions. And you're with Royal Caribbean. So um, what is your insight into the auditions for cruise ships and Broadway auditions? And um, I want you to talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, well, the big, the, the to me, the biggest, um, the most unique thing about cruise ship auditions, and really it's all the cruise lines, they all have different focuses and different styles of things they do, but the biggest thing is versatility in your style of singing um, and very good technique because the shows tend to be very demanding, you know, when they put together review shows, they'll, they take all the big songs, you know, that's what people want to hear. So you may have five or six big solo numbers and then a few duets um, and then maybe a big group number at the end or something. And that's in a 45 minute show. And you will do that twice in an evening. Um, then you may have another show that's different or, or a Broadway musical. We have Broadway musicals as well. Um, but the whole point of the entertainment program on ships is to give variety. So um, we were chatting earlier, you might sing a Celine Dion song in one show and then the same person might sing something from Phantom of the Opera in another show. So that brings a lot of challenge with how to use your voice, how to keep it healthy, um, the style that you use. Um, and so that's one of the biggest things when you're auditioning for, you know, an opera company or you're auditioning for a musical theater show, you're usually auditioning for one thing. But when you're auditioning for a cruise line, you're generally auditioning for multiple shows. Um, or unless you're in a, if a Royal Caribbean, we do audition specifically for our Broadway musicals, but they are also paired with, with um, review shows that have generally different style singing than what is in the Broadway show that goes with it. So it's that versatility um, and I would say that one of the most important things that that singers don't do before going to a cruise ship audition is actually research the cruise line that they're auditioning for. Look at what their demographic is. Are they a cruise line that caters to upper class people or is it a big party ship that's meant for all ages and it's you know, like going to Disney World, it's a less expensive vacation. Also, are the ships really big? Do they have huge theaters? Are they more lounges? Um, do they, what kinds of singers have they hired? Do they usually go for more mature singers or are there lots of singers who are right out of high school or right out of college? Um, so it's really important to do that research and see specifically what you're auditioning for because they are not one size fits all. I mean, I can tell you when I sit and watch a singer, I can, I'll know, yep, they've got a good belt or they have a good range or they have a good look or they have good technique. But some people will come in with, you know, let's say a very legit music theater song, uh, musical theater song, and the ships that we're casting for at that time, it's really mostly pop music, or it might be, we will rock you, um, you know, which is the music of Queen. So singing something, you know, that's more that shows that you're a legit Broadway soprano won't help us. Um, so those kinds of things, un understanding what it is you're auditioning for and what the company is that you're auditioning for. Yeah, for sure. Wow, that's really good advice. <laughs> I don't even think I got that advice back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good to know. Um, so um, do you do Broadway auditions too? Yes. So at Royal Caribbean, we have seven ships that have seven Broadway musicals. Um, and uh, Royal Caribbean partnered with um, Duncan Stewart of Stuart Whitley Casting back in 2010 when we did Chicago the Musical. Um, at that time, Duncan was the, and still he still is, but at the time he was the casting director for Chicago the Musical on Broadway and the West End. And so when Royal Caribbean got Chicago the Musical, they went along with him as their um, casting director. And it just was a match made in heaven. He's he loves cruising. He lit, gets it. He loves Broadway. And in his mind, he always says, I want to take people from the cruise ships and bring them to Broadway. I want to take people from Broadway and get them out on the cruise ships. Um, because really the talent level and the, the, the technical abilities of the, the theaters. In fact, a lot of the newest ships on, on the sea of all cruise lines have much more technical abilities than your average Broadway theater because those theaters are very old. Um, but he, uh, it's been such a pleasure to work closely with him. Um, you know, he's gone on to uh, like his company won a Tony Award for their casting in Pippin. Um, he cast Hades Town. I mean, many of the big hits on Broadway right now, his company is casting. So, and I sit next to him for our, our Royal Caribbean auditions. And what's that's been such a wonderful experience for me to learn. Um, I was an auditioning person on Broadway before, but I'd never been involved in casting on Broadway until Royal Caribbean started doing these shows. And um, what's interesting to see is his viewpoint and all, what a lot of the directors that are looking for, you know, obviously they're looking for high skill, but they're also the, the, 
the the most important thing I think I can tell people from that experience um, of sitting with a Broadway casting director is um, what we're what they're looking for is someone who is really interesting and confident in themselves. Yes, you have a talent ability, of course, that's a given. You have to be able to sing and and know what that's about, but um, really know who you are as it relates to what you're auditioning for and just explore that and have fun. If they don't, most most of the time, they're not looking for some kind of cookie cutter person to fit into a mold. They wanna see what someone's original you know, being is like and what you bring to a piece of music or a theatrical song. That's, that's what makes it exciting. And you know, if you think about like, I always use Bette Midler as one of those examples. Is Bette Midler the best singer in the world? No. Is she the best dancer? No. Is she the most beautiful woman in the world or the best actress? No. But she is the most unique person. You will you don't find a person like her. She doesn't, you don't go, oh, there's there a dime a dozen. She's very unique. Um, so everyone has abilities to cultivate that in themselves. It's just that most of the time we're chasing, oh, I want to be the next Kristen Chenoweth, or I want to be the next Adina Menzel, or I'm trying to be this person or that person. And actually that's great. And for little snippets of time, those things do happen and people are looking for that, but it's so much more refreshing. And especially now, and especially during COVID where basically there's been a complete reset, diversity and just the interesting qualities of human beings of who you really are and what you bring to the table um, are going to be valued more than ever. So it's so important during this time to really get in touch with that. Like really be honest with yourself. What do I really like to sing? What are those kind what, let me find more of those songs than just picking, oh, yep, song number 12 that everyone would think that you should do with my voice type, you know? Find things that you really connect with because that connection is what makes you interesting in the, in the audition room. Of course, you need good technique, you need to be able to handle the material, but someone who can come in and just execute it all very well and doesn't have that something extra that's yours um, is less likely to catch, catch a casting director's eye. That is some of the best advice. And I got chills just the way you explained it just now and hearing it from you, especially. Um, I actually had this a similar uh, conversation with, with the other two ladies that have done Broadway as well. And they said the exact same thing that a lot of times we just want this, you know, that cookie cutter, I need to look like that, that role. I need to look like Christine Daae. But well, Christine Daae is just a, you can just put a wig, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's a wig and it, it is a voice, it's a technique, but it's also, who are you? You know, we want to know who you are and get to know you because a big part of that, I think, is if, if you're not easy to get along with, too, that is something, like, if you're so stuck on one thing, um, that's, that, that, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you can see right through that, you know, where it's very rigid kind of personality, can, can we kind of break that shell, you know? Yes, you just touched on something that is we say this all the time when when let's say there's three people who are equally talented but they have to bring different aspects of things almost without a doubt the person we always ask ourselves but do i want to work with that person that's really the question is and for me when i ask that question it's a couple of things do they have a personality that is open that's malleable that is willing to play you know when when i audition people a lot of times i'll you know they come in and do this especially if you come for a callback i'll say so don't think about this as, a, as an audition. Let's think about this as a workshop. Where this is not the final performance of this song you're doing. It might, maybe it's a song from the show now that we've given them and they've come back with it. It's, you know, 20 bars of it. And what I want to see is can this, how does this person work? Do they bring something to the table besides just singing the right notes? Um, do they have ideas about it? Are they open to us giving them different ideas than they maybe thought it was? And that, that ease of energy going back and forth is really a big thing. That's when you can let yourself just be open. And believe me, I know what that's like when you're standing in front of a panel of people, you know, it's a very, um, it's, you have to be very courageous to do that, but know that most people who are sitting on the other side of the table have either been where you are, or if they haven't, all they want is for you to be the best that you can be. So um, that's kind of the, 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 the way you got to think about it. But it's exactly what you said, Corinne, that it is, do, does someone want to work with you? It's not, 
and and so I think in in many ways, if you if you flip your script in your brain before you do an audition, don't think of it as I'm going to go in and give a performance of my song. To me, it's I'm going to I'm, I'm stepping into this room that is a workshop. I'm going to show you the clay that you have to work with. This is what I'm doing. What do you think of that? Thank you very much. Okay, you leave. Or they may say other things, or they may give you a callback. So that idea of instead of it's a, a rigid performance, it's just, it's living and breathing. And nine times out of 10, we will ask you to do different things, unless it's just a matter of, you know, sometimes we know, yep, that's the right kind of person, automatically just give them a call back and then, but it's at the call back we work with you. But some other people in their initial audition, if we're not quite, it's like we see something, but we're not quite sure, we start to push at that shell and see, do you have, what are you like to work? Can we push you in a direction? And then if we see things like, oh, oh, they do have, oh, they have something we didn't think they had. Oh, great. Okay, let's call them back and then we'll, and sometimes it'll change the role you're called back for because the way that you work or the, um, you know, when your personality comes out, like someone might come in for Chris, you know, uh, Christine Daae and it's like, well, she's a Carlotta, you know, like let's, or, you know, just to use that show as an example. But um, hopefully you've done your research and you really know what role you're right for, but some shows, you know, there's things that can swap around a bit. So yeah, it's all of that is important. That's so awesome. And I love what you said about um, this is the clay that we have to work with. Because you, that just, it was an image in my mind when you said that, that we are malleable. We are, we, and we, and we should be malleable. But I think a lot of times, especially people right out of college, you know, they don't, they, they, they know their technique and they think they know what they're doing when it comes to an audition. So they go in and they, they, it takes a little while to break free from that robotic um, methodology, I guess. And when it comes to auditioning, like, you know what to do, but let's just kind of see what else you can do and let it be a little bit free flowing and have some fun with it because really that's what it's all about, right? <laughs> it's having <Yeah>. fun <laughs> and it's structured and it's hard work. And there's a lot of, a lot of years of, of work and technique that go into it, but it really is about having fun and getting to know people and you, you build your lifelong family, you know, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. 